and welcome to another edition of Pro Hire Truck TV. And I always say this, that we're looking at something special. And this is the most special thing I've seen ever right now. And we've been doing our, our show now for a couple of years. And this is the, the most interesting thing that I've seen in the transport industry today. I've been invited and happy to be here at Electra up in the, the sunny north of England and, and you know it actually on our normal weather forecast we resumed it is actually sunny shining in in the north of England in Blackburn and I'm with Ben Smith who's the managing director of Electra Commercial Vehicles and we're coming to look today at, at something that Ben and his team have designed which is an, an absolute first you know so um, thanks for inviting me and Ben it's Probably been brilliant great to have you here <laughs> it, it, and, and we're going to talk about this as we walk around it. It's so exciting, and I know we always say this. We've got, you know, a few minutes to talk about something which is absolutely immense. We'll make sure we share the details of, of, of Ben's amazing company as part of this of this of this show as well. And, and of course, always everything we do on Pro Green and Pro Hire Truck TV are available on Full Contract Tire. So let's have a look at what we've got here. We've got a hydrogen fuel cell refrigerated vehicle. Yes, we absolutely have. Manufactured, assembled, put together by Ben and his amazing team up here at Electric Commercials in, in Blackburn. If, if we talk uh, our, our guys through it, so we've got um, an Iveco, effectively an Iveco chassis, is that right? The, the base the chassis is based on the Aveco Eurocargo platform, okay. uh, which we we are supplied as a glider. Yeah. So they're to our specification. So a glider comes in with just nothing there apart from the cab and the wheels. Debadged, uh, you know, everything, wheels, axles, everything, cab is Aveco yep. for all intents and purposes. So this is actually the, the, the fuel cell that's on this vehicle. Right. So this is the 44 kilowatts. Yeah. A fuel cell. Uh, I, I find this an interesting topic when you talk to fuel cell manufacturers. What's its rated output and what is it actually going to output? So some people claim, you know, 80 kilowatts, but actually it only gives out 44. We're going to run this fuel cell around 22 kilowatts. Okay. Uh, you can see here, there's four cylinders on there. Uh, each of those have five kilograms of hydrogen in. So behind the cab we have 20 kilograms of hydrogen? 20, yeah. Yeah. They're stored at 350 bar. Yeah. Uh, Lots of exciting discussions on uh, whether we go to 700 bar. I think it's possible. Yeah. Uh, there are engineering challenges as in fittings and things like that. The bigger challenge is infrastructure. So what would the benefit of going to that much higher pressure be? The tanks are lighter because they're full carbon fibre. Right. Uh, 700 bar, you get twice the amount of hydrogen. So ah. right now you'd be looking at you can squeeze twice as much in. kilograms of hydrogen. Yeah. We're, we're talking in terms of operating hours, so it's an interesting topic. How yep. far is this vehicle going to go? Loosely, we're aiming for 300 miles, Yeah. but we're actually saying nine hours of operating hour, hours. So eight right. to nine hours of that fuel cell topping up the batteries. And that's keeping the truck doing normal, normal operations, including the fridge for, for that and length of time. What does it do? Uh, I've got a discussion with a client that doesn't want an electric truck, not because it won't do it, and I've told them, I can build you an electric truck that will do your operation. They don't want the charging infrastructure, which is really interesting. Yeah. This vehicle will come back into base fully charged for the next day. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. I understand that. Of course, charging is becoming a massive problem in itself, isn't it? It so, is. So, you know, looking at all sorts of sites we go to every, every, every week, the biggest challenge they've got is not actually buying the truck today, it's actually being able to plug it in yeah. and having enough power on site to make that work. And I think that's that's a really interesting point. Yes, I mean, we're, we're working with charging infrastructure people, uh, but the, the key to this is we're working with a hydrogen infrastructure company. So we, you'd have tanks on site for your own hydrogen. So not Amazing. only in our core business, which is battery electric vehicles, do we supply the truck, we supply everything behind it, you know, the maintenance and, and infrastructure is probably yep. the key thing. We've delivered trucks in uh, and they haven't even thought about charging, so we're having to do that planning. Yeah. With this, it's been really exciting working with Element 2. Uh, I believe they have two tube trailers already, so a 40-foot trailer. Uh, it just looks like a shipping container on a trailer. But inside is uh, eight tubes. I believe it's eight, it may be 12. Yeah. Uh, and in there is stored the hydrogen. Okay. And then they've got the filling station. That's currently operating in Stockton. Okay. Uh, they've got some taxis they're operating. 
uh, and it's interesting to see where's adopting it. You know, you've got Elsmere Port, you've got all these places. You've got ITM in Birmingham as yeah, well, haven't you? Now that have, yeah, yeah, yeah. But right now, here today, it's chicken and egg. Absolutely. Is it the truck or is it the? <laughs> we've got the truck, and luckily we've got the trailer yeah. to. And, to and the infrastructure as well, absolutely. This, oh, is, absolutely. This, is, this is this is this is this is very cool. Because we said 22 kilowatts. That 22 kilowatts is produced from the fuel cell that then charges the batteries that are yes. on board. That's how it works. So it's yeah. A very simple principle. There's a fuel cell in there, which is a stack, uh, and in between that stack is multiple layers of, you know, it, it's basically I've seen one open and and it's a composite with lots of basically wormholes. You know, when you're a kid yeah. and you have the ant farm, and the, it just looks like that, uh, and you force hydrogen and oxygen through there, yeah. uh, and it somehow magically generates electric. Absolutely. I'd love to tell you more detail. Not, if, I've if, not got if, my head if, around the magic. If, if you watch one of our videos from a few weeks ago, we've done a basic fuel cell operating yeah. um, process, but that, that's brilliant. So this is a temperature control body. Um, so not only is it going forward with hydrogen on the fuel cell, you're powering a fridge. Yes. How is that's that? That's a key thing. How is that? We, we've already built, and you may see in the yard, there's a few fridges here already. Yeah. Uh, we're already running the in power, supplying power for the inverter and the body. And that's an interesting thing you touched on there. OEMs are building electric trucks, but they will not allow you to take power from the, from the batteries. batteries. Yeah. So you need to supply your own power or put an engine on there. Yeah. We're different. We understand the needs and we spec the truck to suit. So we already knew what this truck needed uh, to have this body on. Actually working with Carrier on this. So working with Scott Dark and his team on this yes. and, and Mark Daniels, no doubt. Those guys are yeah. absolutely starting the world to change the world in refrigerating bodies and electrifying them. I absolutely agree. So it's been really exciting working with those guys. Solomon, who built the body, I mentioned earlier. Yeah, amazing bodybuilder, absolutely. Short time frame. Uh, but ultimately, it's an electric truck with a generator on board, which is the hydrogen fuel. So on the, on the other side, we've got the Carrier fridge unit. Um, this is a, a TRS unit, is it? Yeah. yeah. So, um, looks like a twin cool. It is, it's a dual compartment. Yeah, so, so this is taken from a, an EPTO, or is it from straight from your oh, powertrain? it's an inverter. So, straight from an inverter, right. Yeah, so interestingly, working with these guys, when, when we got into the nitty gritty, uh, they're using some of the same components that we have used or are using. I have to say, I've worked with Carrier for, for 30 years and, and, and actually the same with Solomons and both them companies are, 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 are an amazing choice for this, for this, for this project, so yeah, Absolutely. fair, fair play. And this, is, this, is, this is very exciting, it's a lovely, lovely thing, you know, it really is. So I mentioned this is uh, it's two weeks away from being finished. Yeah. Interestingly, I said the challenges that are going to be faced by the industry and one of them is where do you park the bloody thing? <laughs> we can't have it in the in the facility because yeah. it's currently got eight kilograms of hydrogen on. So at night, I mean, our facility is not big enough, to yeah. be frank, you may see it around. Um, so it has to live here. Uh, so the tape is just, a, the guys are going to have the battery lids off this afternoon, probably. We've interestingly, to get this project over the line, put 225 kilowatts of power on it. Yeah. This is one of the packs that we have going through production. Um, we're gonna step that down to a 140, 140 kilowatt when they arrive in May. That's gonna gain this vehicle a ton of uh, 120. I was, I was gonna ask what, what your expected payload on something like this would be when you're in your normal. Our battery electric fridges currently have a, a capacity of about seven and a half tons. About seven and a half tons. 19 ton vehicle. Yeah. Uh, and they're operating, they're doing returning in operation with the fridge running around 130 to 140 miles with only 225 kilowatts on. So as you boost up to... Your new, your new batteries. Have, have, new we, won't, we won't show them today, but there's some yeah. new stuff coming down the line. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so this vehicle currently, I think, has around five and a half to six tons of payload, right. which we know isn't correct. And you'll gain another ton when you. We'll gain the ton. We'll we'll look at what we want to lightweight, such as the uh, framework and things like that. So there are gains to be had, but right now, this is proof of concept. Listen, I, I, I am so how excited. Work? How does it operate? What yeah. does the telemetry look like? You know, how far does it go? Because we could talk facts and figures all day and night. Uh, but Proof of the pudding is driving something on the road. And, and again, it's the only one I've seen. So amazing. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. there's more to come. You yeah. know, the discussions from, from talking about kicking off this project with this, we're already looking at a new facility uh, to, to build fuel cell vehicles in. And the industry changing vehicles don't just stop with this fridge truck, it will be sweepers, gritters, RCVs, all these other vehicles that need 
fuel cells to, to operate uh, and to help everyone go green. One of the things that uh, you mentioned in our, our podcast, we were lucky enough to do um, our sustainable podcast from here today as well, was the challenges for repair and maintenance on vehicles of this scale and hydrogen itself in, in the future, which is going to be vented sites and so forth and so on. So that's going to prove another challenge, I guess, in, in this industry going forward, no? Yeah, I mean, uh, I had my nervousness on when I saw the technology and how do we make it happen. Yeah. But I think my biggest nervousness was for the industry. Yeah. I know we can do what we need to build these and to support them. Yeah. But when you look at the wider industry, you know, you're leasing companies. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, how do you get your workshops and your teams ready to bring a vehicle like this in? And it has to happen. This isn't going to go away, you know. Well, I think I think I think this is exactly why we're doing this. You know, um, we're learning every day. Um, I'm from our pro high side as well. We're trying to to learn. We have sunshine in the north, but it is windy, so um, <laughs> it's better in the rain. Um, but. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's absolutely incumbent upon everyone to try and understand the challenges that are going to come with new technology as well, I suppose, and, and, and that's going to be really, really key. You know, uh, this has to happen when, I mean, it felt like when, the, when we had that fuel crisis, uh, when was it, last September? Yeah. It was like someone turned a switch. Yeah. We had customers in, in our boardroom that were, you know, their, their direct board were like, you're not buying another diesel. Yeah. Uh, and I'm talking about companies that have got thousands of them. Absolutely. And these poor guys are sat there. <laughs> what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Yeah. Uh, and it just, it's just changed and it isn't yeah. going to stop now. It's not you know, now. Fuel cells have been it's around not. forever, but this is here to stay. And it's exciting to, to take it where it needs to go. But the challenging part is infrastructure, which we can help with. Yeah. It will come. Uh, and the maintenance thing, you know, we're working with universities. Yeah. There has to be a program to bring people up to speed yeah. uh, and the new generation. You know, I think it's crazy that some of the HGV technicians, they're not interested in this. Nope. Crazy. You bring a 16-year-old who's been playing whatever computer. Space Invaders, absolutely. Yeah. Into this. <laughs> yeah. It's a new world. They don't know what a truck is, but they just take to it. I absolutely that's agree. What, that's the exciting bit. Is, it is. You know, the vision is to build an academy and bring all these guys through and bring them into the industry. Absolutely amazing. In, in an exciting yeah, absolutely, and, and I absolutely 100% agree. Bringing the youngsters yeah. on in a very new way of working is, is what this is all about. Ben, thank you very much for showing me your baby, <laughs> you know, um, really pleased. We're going to come back and see this on the road, you know, so um, in, 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 a, in, a, in a very few weeks we'll, we'll get some information and be able to, to share that with you. That brings us to um, an end of this edition of Pro I Truck TV. All the information all of the contacts are available on our on our website on our pro world page everything we do as you as you know from now is available through pro hire pro green on on contract hire as well as uh through ben here it's been a great pleasure today to be involved with someone that that excited about his product it's it's just infectious his team we've met everyone here today and everyone's on the same page so what a great place to be I've really enjoyed my time here today and we'll be back again soon to pick up with Ben and, and, and bring some more really exciting things coming down the line from an amazing factory in the north of England. Take care, see you soon guys. Thank you, no worries, thank you very much.